sketched out. I just used a Sharpie on the plastic that our that my canvas came on and I sketched out a cute little pumpkin and I think we're gonna use some creams and grays for our pumpkin. So I have a kind of a snow white color and I have a cream color and I have a pale, pale gray. That is snow white, uh, bleached sand, it's getting noisy next door guys, and this is granite gray. So we're gonna use that for our pumpkin. We have a couple of greens for our stem, for our leaf, and then we're gonna figure out our background afterwards. Okay, so the gingerbread house is a paid uh, workshop. So if you are in the uh, Christmas tree challenge, the link to purchase the gingerbread house is on that page. And to find the video, you have to log into your uh, library on the Shattered Circle. If you can't figure out how to find it, please feel free to email us for assistance at info at artshattered.com. So uh, Becky or Catherine, can you um, post that uh, for, for assistance? Uh, email us please, uh, because it's gonna be super hard for me to just explain how to get to that here. So anywho, we're gonna go ahead, I already made myself a tracer. I just traced over my sketch on my um, canvas, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the two options, okay? I am going to take this off. Oh, I think my marker went through, that's not cool. Hopefully we'll just paint right over that and it won't matter. Yay, Amber, we're gonna have so much fun, guys. You, are got, you guys are really gonna love it, I promise. And we're gonna hold your hand the entire way. We're not gonna let you uh, just try, have to try to figure out uh, your own system. Okay, so here are our options. We are gonna be painting our pumpkin in warm whites and grays, okay? So those are our colors. So my option number one was using this stem. This is our canvas size, guys, just in case you didn't know. So this is our stem, potentially. I should have left that on there so you can kind of see, but we'll do this. So this is our stem. I went ahead and drew it on. And so you, it's also paintable for, and this is for members inside our group. Our group members always get tracers and um, supply lists for what we do on this page. So that is a perk of being a member. But anyway, we're gonna do these three colors. And this is a potential stem. And with that potential stem, uh, we are going, to potentially, I don't have gold vitrograph, but I do have clear. So I was thinking these are like glass stringers that are curvy. It's called vitrograph, but I was thinking we do the cream pumpkin, the gold stem, and then we add in like two or three of these pieces of clear glass as just our little pumpkin curly cues. So that is option number one. We need three. Let's find another one. Mm -hmm. So we could do like three stems. I mean, three little curly cues and um, our gold stem. That's option number one. Option number two, which I feel like you guys are gonna jump on. Let me put these back up so I don't break them. Option number two. Option number one is the clear. Option number two, let me remove this. I'm just gonna set it right here so you can still see it. That's the gold with the clear. Option number two, look at this stem I found. So this was in a big box of, look at this. I wanna show you this, guys, because you are going to have a fit. So I used to buy glass from a glass blower in Georgia and he actually went out of business during COVID, but he had sent me all these little cutoffs, okay? And we are going to gift a couple of these stems to people who sprinkle, uh, anybody who uh, would love to be gifted 
um, a stem. Uh, make sure you sprinkle the love and um, we're gonna gift three or four of these stems to people who wanna make their own pumpkin. So check out these stems, okay? Look at that one, super cool. There's a light green one. Look at all these fun, look at this blue one. And I saved all these so uh, we could make, look at this one, y'all. That one is a C, that's for me, Cindy. This one, and look at this one. So we are going to potentially do this which is have the green stem, and then I have green vitrograph as well. So we could do the green stem, and I'll need to cut these shorter, but we can do like green vitrograph at the top of our pumpkin. And then I was thinking cream pumpkin, a little bit of green, and maybe some fun things at the bottom, and then we'll add clear glass onto our pumpkin. So what do you think, one or two, green, or clear, green, clear, one, two. What do you think? Let me know. I'm gonna go ahead because it won't matter at this point. I believe, uh, I'm not sure if the gingerbread is available. I think you can purchase it on the Shattered Circle as a one-off kit if you're not in the Christmas tree challenge, but I would need to check on that. I would need, oh, Amber, don't be scared. We got you, this is fun and super, super easy. So what are we doing? Number two, Maureen says number two. Since she was the first person I've seen uh, comment, we're gonna go with number two. So we're gonna go ahead and just get started. I'm not gonna do anything on my background yet. I think we're gonna paint our pumpkin. We're not gonna paint our stem. I just added this stem so that um, if you don't have something glassy that you could use as a stem, you can at least paint it, okay? So instead of doing that stem, I'm gonna use this. We're gonna paint our leaf, we're gonna paint our pumpkin, and then we'll figure out our background, all right? So let's go ahead, where is my graphite paper? Let's go ahead and trace our cute little pumpkin onto our canvas. And now I also need tape. Love the vitrograph too. So find the vitrograph on Etsy. All right, so I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna tape down my pumpkin. I'm gonna take him all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna tape him very quickly and gently. All right, and I am gonna use this carbon paper. Uh, it used to be called carbon paper. If you're old like me, you call it carbon paper, but now these days it's called graphite paper. So you can find this at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Walmart, anywhere like that. All right, so I am gonna just stick that up under. And I'm gonna trace, I'm not gonna do my stem, but I am gonna trace over my pumpkin, just very gently onto my canvas. I'm gonna start with the middle and just use my uh, stylus. If you don't have a stylus, you can totally use an ink pen or a pencil, or you can just sketch out your little pumpkin yourself. They're super easy. The center, I'm gonna have to flip that. The center is just like an oval shape, almost an egg, a little fatter at the bottom most of the time. Oops, I went right off the edge. And then the outside is just a backward C and a forward C, just the length of your pumpkin. All right, I was doing a terrible job. I'm too close to the edge over there, so I may have to bring my pumpkin out a little because I got a little crazy. Taping. All right, now I'm gonna just trace my leaf. And before I remove the tape, I'm gonna peek under and make sure all my parts are there. So everything's there. Yes, typing, Becky, isn't that terrible? <laughs> okay, so let me get this tape off of my tracer so it doesn't stick to it for life because I, can't, I couldn't find my blue tape. It's been uh, hijacked, so I had to use this uh, packing tape. 
So now we're just gonna go ahead and start painting our pumpkin that we traced on to our canvas, okay? And this is a six by 12. These are super hard, hard to find in like your local craft stores. Um, this I purchased at Dick Blick, all right? So let's get our colors and get started with some painting. All right, so I got, I have my handy dandy water cup. Got a little paper towel to uh, wipe my paintbrush on. And I'm gonna grab a larger paintbrush. This is a three quarter inch flat. And I'm gonna wet it. And then I'm gonna get some of that water off. I'm gonna scooch this over. And I am going to put my paint on my little palette, which is just a plate that I use. I'm gonna put all three colors. This is a Snow White. Let me see. Oops, we don't want that. So we'll put some Snow White. We're gonna put a little bit of the bleached sand. Thank you guys for the sprinkles. Mm. The Christmas tree challenge, the po the, uh, <sighs> Keep getting little bugs. The link should be pinned to the top. It should say uh, the Shattered Circle Christmas Tree Challenge. This is granite gray. Any light colored gray will work for this. So we'll put a little bit of that. So those are my three pumpkin colors. We're gonna start with the Snow White, which looks gloppy to me at this point. So I'm just gonna get a coat of the Snow White on my pumpkin. Let's just get it covered right up to my tracer edge. And I know it's kind of hard to see because I'm painting white on white, but as soon as we start adding the details, you'll be able to see it better. I didn't want to paint my background a color and then have to put 20 coats of white on top. So that's why we started with just a regular background, just the canvas, so. We're gonna add our background last. Because I'm not adept at going just around the outside edges before I paint, I'll make a mess. And that's just how I was feeling it today. Just feeling it that way. All right, so I'm gonna get a coat of paint. I can still see my lines, so everything is copacetic. Let's do our little hump at the bottom. And we'll paint one coat on our entire pumpkin. We're gonna let that dry for a few seconds while we do our first coat. I like to call it a ground coat. Um, I don't know what you guys call that when you do that one coat and then you come back and do the rest. But I like to call it a ground. And let me go up. I gotta hold my mouth right. All right, so, oops. There is that coat of white. We're gonna let that dry for a few seconds while we paint our green on our leaf. And I'm just gonna use the lighter of the two greens, right? And this one is a new color by Folk Art called Forest Moss. Any light green, you just need two greens, a light green and a dark green. So we'll put a little bit of that on my palette. I'm gonna grab a different brush. I'm gonna wet it and get that excess moisture out. And I'm gonna paint the entire leaf with this green. I have a stray hair stray bristle and I don't like that so I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna give it a haircut boom thank you so we're just gonna do this and then as soon as I do this we're going to dry it up a little this brush is terrible no thank you let's do another one that's better 
We're gonna do our first coat. We'll let it dry or get it dry. And then we're gonna do a second coat and our details at the same time. I like to use paint. I like to paint my details wet on wet. So this brush is shedding too, so. Real life, real life, y'all. Real life happening over here. And they're making so much noise next door. Can anybody hear the people next door? Is it just me? It sounds like they're mowing the grass inside the building. I'm pretty sure there's no grass in there, so I'm not sure what that noise is. So we're just gonna get that first coat of green on. And all this is still wet, so I'm gonna grab can only hear me. Yay, that's good. I'm, I'm loud too, so, you know. I'm gonna get this dry. I'm gonna use my Seek One heat gun, just like a blow dryer. And we're gonna get this coat dry so we can just keep on moving. Y'all don't hear them? Good, 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 good. I'm gonna move this down a little too. I'm gonna get this dry. My pumpkin is almost dry, and I don't know if you can see, but I can still see my tracer lines through that white paint. Uh, plantation pie, this is avocado, this dark green, and they're super close, okay? I would say dark Hauser or um, avocado would be super close to plantation pie. I think that's dry. We'll give it a second or two. Hey, Angela. We'll give this a second or two to cool off. And then we are going to paint each section one at a time. And as we paint, we're going to add some detail with the cream color and the gray color. All right, so I think I'm gonna just start in the middle and I'm gonna put another quick coat just on that middle section. So we can work wet on wet. This paint, this snow, whatever color this is, is goopy. It's got like paint boogers in it or something. All right, we'll go around the world. So while that is wet, I'm gonna offload. I'm just gonna wipe my brush on my paper towel just to get the excess off. And then I'm gonna go into the cream color, which is bleach sand. I'm just gonna load some of that onto my brush and I'm just going to make some strokes just paint a little of that in the center, just to give yourself a little bit of uh, added color. And if you get too much, you can always add some white back on top. All right, I'm gonna offload that. Just brush it onto your napkin. And now I'm gonna take my gray. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get the gray just on the corner of my brush. Can you see that? Just a little bit on that corner. Then I'm gonna go back and forth on my palette to kind of blend it into my brush. Now, I'm gonna have to turn this upside down because I need to do it this way. On the right side of my pumpkin, I'm gonna start in the center at the bottom and I'm gonna come up with my brush and just brush in that gray on the right side of my pumpkin, all right? And that is our shadow. So that is our center, all right? Loving it. I'm gonna offload some of that gray again. Actually, I probably need to rinse that just a smidge. Anita's paints are off the shelf. I'm glad I have a bunch. <laughs> no longer making Anita's, yeah. I don't know why. 
I think they're just making their own brand. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this white and just bring a little bit of that back in. I had a little too much of the bleach sand. We can also do that at the end. I'd make any adjustments. So I'm gonna get my white again, and I'm gonna work on this side. So I'm gonna do that second coat of the Snow White. And let's come all the way down. Make sure you're covering your tracer lines at this point because you don't want those to be seen. So cover that. We're gonna get, we'll offload. Get a little bit of that um, bleach sand again and just bring some of that into your pumpkin as much or as little as makes your heart happy. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with my gray. I'm just gonna get some on the corner, on the corner of my brush. And I'm gonna go back and forth to blend it into, oops, I need a little bit more than that. Blend it in to the bristles, so I'm not making a harsh line. And where the pumpkin, I can still slightly see where the two, se pump, the two sections are separated. So I'm gonna come right there and I'm just gonna make that line more distinguished, okay? So you're gonna come around and you're gonna make that gray right on that section to separate, all right? Now, I think I'm gonna get a little bit of this tan because I, I, I need that little dot covered up. Well, I'm not gonna be able to do it. All right, let's grab, let's offload. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and come back over here again, just to make sure it's blended. All right, so now we're gonna do the third side. It's very monochromatic. All right, so we're gonna do this side. Just get our white on again. Second coat of the white. I'm gonna make sure that my tracer line is covered. That white is gross, it needs to be in the trash. It's probably a hundred years old. Not a hundred, but I've, some of my paints I've had probably 20 years. I can't believe it's even still viable. All right. So you notice my gray is on the right of each section. So we have a center section, my gray is on the right. We have a left section, my gray is on the right. We're gonna do the same thing because our light is coming from here. I actually should probably do it on the left, but I'm gonna stay consistent. Oh, I need my bleach sand, so let's just make a little bleach sand. Wipe it off. Oh gosh, I hit my funny bone. Oh, ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. <laughs> So we're gonna do it again. We're gonna go in to the gray on the corner of our brush. We're gonna go back and forth to blend it into our bristles, all right? So I'm gonna turn this upside down because that's just the way I need to paint. And I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm just gonna bring that gray all the way up. We'll bring it down, meet in the middle. I need a little bit more. I didn't quite make it. Now, if you struggle with doing your shading this way, you can just, like, I, that's just how I learned to shade was using the corner brow brush because you can totally just get a little on the tips of your bristles, just dip in and then just kind of blend it in. And you can totally just run that line down the side and j then just kind of micromanage it a little. Just blend it off into 
your pumpkin, but the thing you want to do is make sure it's not like a hard line. You're gonna wanna come back with a little bit of color, white or the uh, bleach sand, and just kind of blend that out so it is not like a hard line of gray. Does that make sense? Let's see how we did. I think we need a little bit more gray right here. Oh, that was excessive. Do you see what I did there? That is what I would call a hard line. See how I just made a really dark splotch there? It's not really blended. So now I'm gonna take some of that bleach sand, which is the beigey color, and I'll just blend it in to that. Whoops, too much. Just blend it into that. Take it around. And for these types of pumpkins, literally the kind of the messier, the better, in my opinion. So don't feel like it has to be perfect. Nothing in life is perfect. Certainly nothing on this page. So let's turn it around and see what we have here. I'm kind of digging it. I'm just gonna do a little bit of blending with my gray, just adding a little bit of gray here and there. just for giggles. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that, y'all. What do you think? It's pretty cool looking, kind of monochromatic. Okay, so while we wait on that to dry, let's put a second coat on our cute little leaf. So I'm gonna get a brush, I'm gonna wet it. I'm gonna second coat that with my green, which is, this is the um, forest moss. So we'll just get a second coat on our leaf. I have to hold my mouth right so I don't get out of line. I need to cover it. See that black dot, it's driving me crazy. Really need to cover it. I'm gonna have to bring that side of the pumpkin up a little. I think that is my Sharpie went through my canvas when I was uh, sketching. When I was sketching my little pumpkin, I think that my Sharpie went through. So I need to get that covered up. Hopefully it will cover. Let's try this. Okay, while that's wet, I'm gonna take some of the avocado and I'm gonna use my white. So the white's on this side of my pumpkin, so the white needs to be on that side of my leaf. I'm gonna get a little bit of white on my brush, and I'm gonna come down that left side of my leaf and just add some white, blend it into that green to give that left side of your leaf a little highlight. Now, I'm gonna offload onto my napkin. I'm gonna get a little bit of that dark green. I'm gonna blend it into my brush on my plate. I'm gonna turn this upside down so I can see what I'm doing. And we're gonna come around the other side with the dark green. And this makes your leaf more realistic and more dimensional, so it doesn't look just like a flat, green leaf. So you can see how just adding that additional color helps blend and make it more three-dimensional. Now what you can do now, I'm going to take a little bit of that darker green on my brush. I'm going to kind of blend it in through the tips. And now I can just take the tip of my brush straight up just using the tips of your bristles and I can just make myself a little bit of a line. That's my, like your leaf veining. Just like that. Voila. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do some surgery on this right here. Hang on. I gotta see if I can cover that. Oh, it covered really well. Hopefully it will 
go away and stay away. That little black dot. So what do you think? Y'all like this one? So I think now maybe, oh, Rhonda, you can, honey. Just takes practice. I promise you, this is just from practice. I paint every single day. So anybody can do this. You just have to practice. Okay, so I wanna get this dry because I wanna show you my fancy, oh, you see a Grinch? I kinda see a Grinch too, oh no. Oh no, oh no, let's shimmy that out a little. I don't want it to be a Grinchy. <laughs> I'm gonna take my heat gun and I'm gonna dry my paint so that we can keep going. Then I'm gonna show you the magic trick to really making it pop. I wanna, I wanna put the stem on to see what it looks like. Oh, y'all, look. I feel like we need to take some green down into the pumpkin. Can you see that? So I'm trying to decide. Actually, I think I'm gonna put glass there, so we're not gonna stress about it. Or I may put my stem this way. Okay, we're just gonna move on. I want to show you guys now how I make my outlining, okay? I love to use these graphic markers from Hobby Lobby. It's called a, it's Masters Touches the brand, that's a Hobby Lobby brand, and it's called an illustration marker. If you search for it on the Hobby Lobby page, it's a graphic pen, and it is a, this one's a three, cause my five dried up, but normally I use a point five. So I'm gonna show you how, if you're older like me and you are not adept at super fine lines, I'm gonna show you a cheat way to give yourself some fine detail lining. So I like to take this pen and I like to use it to outline very loosely my elements in my artwork. Okay, so you can see the difference so that my leaf, and you can see I use very short, quick strokes. I'm not trying to like line it all the way around. I like to use very short, quick, fast strokes so it's a very loosey-goosey outline, all right? And we're gonna do the same thing with our pumpkin, all right? So I'm gonna start in the center, and I'm just gonna make swoops, swoop, 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 and I see how I went out of line here? I don't even mind. To me, that adds to the uh, handmadeness of this, okay? So we're gonna come around. We'll come around this way. I'll make a couple of dots. Y'all know I like my dot, dot, dots. A couple of swipes, and there we go. So now, the center of the pumpkin really starts to stand out, right? So now we're gonna go on the right side, just a swoop and a swoop, short, dot, 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 short, quick strokes with your marker, all right? So we're gonna come over here, same thing, just stroke all the way around, all right? Voila, what do you think? I'm digging it. Digging it, digging it. So see how it made it from almost kind of flat to um, it kind of, the outlining helps um, make that pop. So now we get to do the fun stuff, okay? So we are going to use this as our stem. And I have three pieces of the vitrograph that we are going to add in to our uh, pumpkin as well, but I'm gonna need to cut those. So I brought my handy dandy uh, pliers, my glass pliers, and I gotta figure out exactly where I need to cut these. All right, so I think we'll do one, I'm thinking I wanna 
put my pumpkin this way and just have it overlap my uh, leaf a little. But, and I think I'm gonna put this like right here. So I need to cut it about right there. So I'm just gonna take my pliers. You can literally break this with your hand if it's the skinny. Somebody said, no. Break right there. And I'm gonna save that because I can use that. And I have another piece that we can put like right there. So I can break that right there. That's a little thicker. It's gonna be a little more difficult to break. So I'm just gonna snip it with my pliers. And we'll get these arranged and we can move our stem if we feel like we need to. Then we have this one and I think I'm going to just snip it off at the end and if we need to snip more, we can. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Pin marks outside the lines are awesome. Okay, so this is somewhat what we're gonna end up with. I may move it around a little, I don't know. We'll see, let's, let's turn it this way just a little and maybe overlap. Hang on, I don't want them to be a circle. I'm just playing right now, trying to figure out exactly how I want this to work. So just give me a little grace, a little grace. I wanna go back this way and this way. All right, so let's see, I feel like um, I'm just kind of looking to make sure before I do anything permanent that this is what I want. I may have to trim that off, but right now I think this is gonna be good. So here's what we're gonna do. Down over the pumpkin, you mean like this? You can do that. That kind of looks odd to me, but maybe this one, or maybe, let's see if we can find one that's a little curlier that can go downward. Let's see what we have in the old Vitrograph bag. Let's see. Uh, let's just pull some out. You're gonna love this. Look. This one is super curvy. Look at that. That's a little much, but check. Check that out. This, I don't like that it's two and then this one long one, but I do. I'm totally digging this one hanging all the way down over the pumpkin. I just wish it was a little shorter. We also have this kind of curly Q one we could add. And let's see what else. Hmm, that's the only ones I really, really, really like. Now I have to make a decision. The, this one, let's see. Let me put these back up and then we'll talk about which one to use, okay? Let me stick these back in. <laughs> Micromanaging my own self, y'all. I'm a hot mess today. Too many decisions have had to be made today. Too many. These are spectacular too, look at that. Is that not great? Looks like all pigtails, very curly Q. How fun. Okay, so let's make a decision. Now that I have all that out of the way, I'm kind of digging that. What do you guys think? Yes or no? I'm gonna show you another option. So I, I'm, I'm thinking, What if it was just two and we did it like that? I'm kind of loving that. And it almost looks like a continuation. What do y'all think? Hearts, yes, yes, just the two. 
It's, t I feel like three is almost overkill. It's like all over the place. Um, and I feel like that is super cute. Our other option is that, but then it just looks funny to me. Okay, we're gonna go with this. This, this, this. I'm gonna go with this one. Do y'all concur? Does everyone approve? Does everyone approve? So, we have Starfire Glass. Isn't that great? That looks pretty good, doesn't it? So we have Starfire Glass. I'm gonna move all of these pieces off, but I'm gonna put them on my napkin so I know I remember how I did it. So it was kind of like this, and then this coming there. But I'm gonna add some of our Starfire Glass to our pumpkin, and then we'll lay the vitrograph into that. So I'm gonna add, let's put right here. Oh my goodness, this is massive, hang on. Got to break these up a little. This is going to be pretty, pretty, pretty. Ugh. I got to break these up. They're big O, big O pieces. Mm. So we're going to add some of this glass. Let me just put it in my hand. Some of this glass to the center. Just like this, just on one side of my pumpkin. Now you guys could do this. You could add your glass however you want. This is just what I choose. So don't feel like you have to do exactly what I do. If there's something you like to do differently, then um, no, it's tempered so it doesn't cut you. It probably could. My fingers are probably just hardened. <laughs> but it's already broken. And so just squeezing it a little just kind of helps to crumble it. I'm not doing it really terribly hard. So now I think I'm going to, let me add a little bit more right there. Now I think I'm gonna add just a smidge here. And this will help it look like, this will help with our stems. So it just doesn't look like um, our stems are just because they're three-dimensional, they're not, it won't, it'll help them look like they're not just floating out of nowhere, okay? So this helps with the depth and dimension of that. So we're going to add a little bit here. And I think I'm going to bring this down about halfway. We'll just add a few little nuggets here and there. And maybe just some on this side over here. I like to just do it random. Then we're going to add some seed beads as well. Fun, fun, fun. Get off, get off me, get off. So just however, you can add as little or as much glass as makes your little heart happy. I am, sometimes I'm a less is more, and sometimes I'm a more is more. So it just kind of depends on the piece and how I feel. Digging that though. So let's put our little pieces back, and you will be able to see how it's going to look. Let me pick that one up with our pieces in. So that one's on its side. So that will go there, and it'll sit better when I have the resin. And then this will go here. I might need to trim that up a little bit. That's okay, too. What do you guys think? Yes or no? I might need to wiggle that in. Hang on. Let me wiggle it in a little. And then put the glass around it. There we go. Yeah, let me just stick some baby pieces back in. Hang on, y'all. I'm being, I'm being super nitpicky right now. <laughs> that looks cool, don't it? I love it. I need a baby piece. Just put right in there and a couple of naked spots. We don't want naked spots. 
So let's cover that right there. And I'm digging this, y'all. This looks super, super cool. Super cool. All right, what do you think? Yeah, you could. I, Lisa, sometimes I just do things backwards. You know, when you're in the moment and um, you're just doing things to see what works and what don't work, sometimes you just do them backwards. And it is what it is. Now, I had considered adding some of this Solex glass to the bottom, but I don't think I want to do that. I think that we don't need it, right? I think that distracts. I think that is going to distract. I think we're going to leave it as is. And we're going to add some beautiful seed beads like frost on the pumpkin, right? I think that's what we're going to do. The green is distracting. I agree. It is perfect just the way it is. So let's mix resin. What do you think about that? I'm going to have a sip of my once a day Diet Coke. Oh gosh, I forgot all about the background, Kelly. Holy moly, I put all this glass on and I haven't painted my background. Let's do something to the background real quick. I'm gonna pick this up. I don't want it to be white. What color should we paint it? Uh, Lord have mercy, y'all. Oh, what in the heck? I just got excited and was ready to put glass on and uh, forgot about my background. So let's talk about the background. What do you think? Pink? Uh, let's see, Darby says she likes the white. What if we do pearl? Keep it light and do a pearl and then maybe add in a little bit of blue-gray. Let's try pearl. Pearl, this is the color that we use in our Christmas trees. It's a metallic white, pale orange, teal, red, I think I'm gonna go with pearl. I want this to be super light and simple. So let's do pearl. Y'all, I done lost my mind. I was ready to move on. All right, so I'm gonna have to go around my glass to do this. So let's be bar of our careful. I might add in a little bit of gray uh, just for interest, but let's do pearl. So I'm just gonna add me hold my canvas. This will make it flash really pretty too, adding the pearl. Let me pull it down a little. Be still, canvas. I'm gonna grab up a tiny bit of that gray. Pearl. I'm just gonna go in one direction. I think so too. I think the pumpkin is so uh, light colored that if we add a dark color, which it was actually my intent, was to do something, I was even kind of thinking about black. But I think the sim it's I think it is gonna mess with the simplicity of it. So we're gonna keep it pearl. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that gray again and just kind of bring in a little bit of that gray around my leaf. I almost messed up. Let me cover that one little edge. It would have been okay too though. I mean, you know, tis what tis. All right, let me hold it right here. Bring it around. Come 
come all the way around the bottom. We're almost there, guys. We almost made a boo-boo. All right, now I need, ah, I got a little pearl in my green, so I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of that green back in, right over the top, it'll be all right. And I'm gonna get a tiny bit of that gray, mix it in with my pearl, and just add a few little strokes across the top. Just for interest, all right. I'm happy with that, happy, happy. Now, here's the problem. I need to dry that so we can resin. And I don't wanna blow my glass everywhere, so I'm gonna have to be super careful. So, hang on, my iPad is literally falling off of my, hang on, hang on, oh, my iPad. It's falling off my tripod. Why is that happening? Okay. All right, I'm gonna have to put it on super, super low and stay far away. I think that would be really pretty, Barbara, if you did a metallic stenciling too. I actually was thinking about doing a stenciled pumpkin today but I couldn't find the stencil that I wanted to use. And so I just moved on to this. But I would love to do a stencil pumpkin. I actually have a super cool stencil too. I'll show it to you in just a second. I have a super cool stencil that I got from Amazon and I can't figure out how I want to use it. I'll show that to you guys in just a second and maybe y'all can give me some ideas. I really want to make sure this is dry because resin and water-based paints do not like each other. So we want to make sure it's nice and dry. Very subtle, isn't it? I love it. Yes, Terry. You love my scene. I know I sing talk, don't I, Kimberlyn? I sing talk. I think that drives my son crazy. Thing talking. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. All right. It is called a Seek One heat gun. Heat gun. Seek One. S e e k o n e. And I got it from Amazon, where pretty much I purchase everything in my life. Amazon. 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 Okay. So now let's go ahead and get back to this. So I'm going to put my stem back on and then we got to put this sucker back where it goes. If I can figure that out, we had it in there perfect, didn't we? And now to mess that up, let me try to wiggle it in where it needs to go. I just messed up. Hang on. It's gonna be what it is, right? Let's add this up here. Let's move this around. We'll add one right there. And this one was right here. Actually, I'm gonna do one more thing. And then it'll it should be dry by the time we Actually, I'm going to use my pen. So I have a brown pen, the pen that we use to go around. I have a brown one, and I'm going to give myself the stem for my leaf. Let's just bring it up. That is a dead pen. Let's see if we have another one. We're going to just bring it up and give ourselves that little leaf stem that we forgot to. My head is not on straight today, apparently. Lack of sleep, begging, waiting on the canvas truck. Voila, I'm gonna get a little piece of glass to put between there so you don't see, I don't like seeing the ends of my 
little stem. So I'd like to just get a piece of glass and cover that up so you don't see that cut little piece. And we're gonna tuck that in there too. There we go. Now I'm happy. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Uh-oh, it's falling again. What is going on here? Hang on, y'all. I need one second because my tripod's about to fall over. We don't want that to happen. We'll have to start fresh. Give me one second. What are you doing, man? Hang on. My iPad, so I can see. So I can see the conversation. Hang on. Now, let me plug it back in. I don't know why it's wanting to fall off. It's just going crazy. All right, so now we can mix our resin. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna scooch this over and we're gonna mix resin and I think I'm gonna mix, let's see, I feel like, um, I feel like an ounce is enough, but I'm scared to just do an ounce. So I think I'm gonna do uh, one and a half ounces. So I'm gonna use my little black pen and I'm gonna mark off the line at the three quarter ounce and then at the one and a half. Now I'm gonna tell you this right now, if you're new to resin, I would always suggest mixing in two cups, not one, because I, I've been doing this, uh, I've been working with resin for over 20 years. Um, and look at that, what in the world? What in the world? We don't want that on our pumpkin. That is ink pen, isn't it? Hang on. Ugh. Let me get a wipe and wipe that off. That would be a travesty. Travesty if we got that on this pumpkin. Well, my iPad's slinking again. Oh, good. It's coming off. That's like ink from somewhere. I'm going to have to take my iPad down. It's about to fall again. I don't know why suddenly it wants to fall down. It's like been sitting on my on my um iPod on my uh, tripod for ten years. Not really, but you know, I want to get all this ink off me. Sorry about that, guys. We're gonna do the be seed beads last. All right, I don't want to get that ink on our art piece, so I want to make sure it's off. Anyway, back to what I was saying. If you're new, I'll always encourage you to use two cups. So you would put three quarters of an ounce in one cup, three quarters in an ounce of an ounce in another, and then mix them together instead of doing it all in one cup. Because if you over pour one or the other into your cup, you're gonna have a really hard time figuring out what you mispoured. Now, I'm gonna tell you all this. I have got to go to my desk and get my gloves because I let Carl, Carl borrow them and now I don't have them. Sorry about that y'all, I told y'all I've been, I've been in kit world for uh, the last few days and I do not have my brain on. So we're gonna um, grab some gloves let me cut this off. Ugh. I'll get in trouble for using these probably. These are kit gloves. And we're gonna mix up some resin. Now art resin is what I use exclusively. It's a two-part epoxy that is mixed 50-50. So you use 50% hardener and 50% resin, and you mix it for three minutes. So I'm gonna put both parts in my cup one at a time. So we have, oh, these are almost empty. That's almost empty, that's almost empty, uh-oh. So I have hardener. We're gonna pour three quarters of an ounce of hardener in this cup, hopefully from this container. 
It's not much, so hopefully it'll come all come out. Come on, come on. You can do it. It's gonna make it. It's gonna make it, please. Okay, three quarters of an ounce of the hardener. Now we're gonna pour three cup, three quarters of an ounce of the resin, okay? So we have hardener and resin. So let's pour the resin. Oh my goodness. This one doesn't have as much in it for whatever reason. Let me get the other one. I think it had more in it. Let's see, yep. I think I have my bottles mixed up. So, resin. And. Almost there, we're gonna make it. There we are. Okay, so now we have one and a half ounces total of our resin product, and I am going to use a stir stick. I'm just gonna use a little wooden stir stick to mix this. Now we're gonna mix this for three minutes, all right? And what I'm gonna do is just stir. I know I am, Amy, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just gonna stir. And I'm gonna scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, scrape, scrape, all the way around, scrape the bottom. And we're gonna do this for three minutes. Are you, Catherine, are you timing me? Okay. Amber, this resin is, uh, here's what I love about this resin, okay? Art resin, I'm gonna stir while I'm talking. Art resin is a non, it's a non-hazmat resin. 99% of the resins on the market are hazmat. They're stinky and you need to like wear practically a hazmat suit to use them. Okay, this uh, product is made in the United States. It's made specifically for art and it has no VOCs, no COV and no BPAs. It doesn't really have much of a smell at all, in my opinion. Um, but if you are sensitive to smell, I would suggest putting on a little paper mask, just like we did during COVID. Um, and if you have skin sensitivities, I would, you're always going to wear gloves. But if you have skin sensitivities too, you might want to wear long sleeves if you are doing that. You should always read the cautionary uh, stuff on whatever resin you're using and follow the directions for that because all, no, all resins are not created equal. And, oh, that was my iPad that fell completely off. It, I knew it was going to happen. I just thought I might be able to make it. Okay, sorry about that. So, uh, this one is really the best on the market in my opinion. Like I said, I've been using resin for a very long time and I've used a lot of the older resins, but this is the only one that I feel like is safe to use um, without having to like have a hazmat suit on. All right, so I hope that answered your question. So I'm just gonna keep stirring and scrape my sides to make sure it's mixed really nicely. Scrape, scrape. Uh, so we're gonna do this for three minutes. These cups, Joanne, came from Amazon. Just look for two ounce mix and measure. Two ounce mix and measure cups, Amazon. They're really great for, Kathy, the hardener is, it, resin is a two-part epoxy, okay? I don't sell the resin yet, Linda, but uh, that is next on my list. I am uh, in works, in the works with having resin on my website, so I can be a one-stop shop. Thank you, Catherine, I see. Um, I see that time is up. Um, anyway, um, it all resins are a two are two parts. There's a resin and a hardener. So anytime you purchase a resin, you're going to have two different liquids or 
uh, chemical, whatever you want to call this. It's like a gel that you mix together. Now, this is Art Resin. Artresin.com is their website. You can buy it at Hobby Lobby. You can buy it at Joann's. You can buy it at Amazon, or you can buy right off their site at this time. Hopefully, I will have um, it in stock in the next month or two. So, here's what we're going to do now. I'm trying to make sure the entire pumpkin is in the filming, in the video, so that you can see it all, because it's just taken up a lot of space. And here is what I'm going to do. All right, so I do want to cover my entire canvas, but I also want my glass to be covered as well. So real quick, I'm gonna shift this up and I am going to just drizzle on a little bit of resin right underneath where that stem is gonna be. I'm gonna actually move it off just for a second. And I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of spread that around so that there's resin underneath and on my canvas. We'll stick it back. So now the glass stem is laying in the resin, but we're also going to just drizzle some resin over the top as well. Now that will make the resin run over the sides and it will help ensure that it sticks down really nicely, all right? And we're gonna do the same with this stem. I'm not moving this one again, I'm gonna take my chances. But with this stem, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of that resin right where my stem is gonna lay. I use my fingers to kind of smear it around. Then we're gonna place it back where it goes. Get right in there. And then we're gonna drizzle over the top just like we did with the other, okay? So we're gonna drizzle right over that top. Make sure it's nice and covered. You can situate it, make sure it's where you want it to be. And now I'm just gonna start putting it on the rest of my glass. This one I have snugged in between some glass bits, so I don't wanna remove it. So I'm just gonna take that chance that it's, and, and I'm gonna be very generous with my resin to make sure it's all covered really nice and stuck down. So we're just gonna drizzle right over the glass. I always do my glass bits first. Just drizzle, just get you back where you're supposed to be. And I'm gonna do this one section at a time. So we're gonna drizzle on the middle. Yeah, I think it'll be okay too. It's little and it's curvy and it's kind of buried in the glass. So I think it'll be all right. It's gonna be what it is, <laughs> right? I long ago stopped stressing too much about my art. It's just is what it is. And that's all it can be. All right, now I'm gonna come over to this side and I'm gonna do those clear pieces on this side. Yeah, you think it wouldn't, you would think, Melinda, that it's not enough, but I promise you it is. And I was actually just thinking that it was going to be too much, that I probably mixed a little too much, but that's okay. What I like to do when I'm working on resining pieces is I like to always have like an extra little piece of art that if I make too much resin, I can always put it on a little side piece. And so I usually always have a little piece handy so, because I don't like to waste it. I don't like to waste the resin. So now we got all the glass bits on that side and now we're gonna do this side. It might be just enough, but I think it's definitely not gonna be not enough. It'll either be too much or just right. All 
All right, almost there. And then we're gonna start spreading it into the center. Once all our glass bits are covered, always do your glass bits first. All right, so all my glass is covered. Most of that is covered. So what I'm gonna do is just take my resin, I'm gonna drizzle some on that side. I'm gonna drizzle it anywhere there is no resin already. And it, we definitely have more than we need. All right, I'm gonna just stop right there and I'm gonna spread it around and then we'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna use my fingers. Make sure you have your gloves on. You don't wanna spread this with your bare hands. I've seen people do that and I'm just like, what are you doing? So just spread it around. I like to move it all the way to my edge, but I do not resin my edges. That is a personal preference. You do you. But if you're gonna resin your edges, I always suggest that you tape the underside of your canvas so that when you have those little drippy uh, resin bits on the bottom, they're taped off and you can pull that tape and the little resin drippies come with it. So I'm gonna go all the way around. Now I need to do this top corner, so I'm gonna move, I got drips. So I'm gonna move my canvas so I can get to it without getting my hair everywhere. And I'm gonna get a little more right here. I might need to use my stick to kind of get underneath that little piece of glass right there. All right, now I'm gonna go around the outside edge of my canvas. I don't know if this does anything, but it make, it's like peace of mind for me. It's like seals that little edge so it doesn't drip over. And I still have, let me see how much resin I have. This is a six by 12 and I still have a quarter ounce of resin. So a half an ounce would have done the job for this, uh, but I always recommend um, that you mix a little more, especially if you're new. And I'm just going to take this and just drizzle a little more on my glass. I don't want to waste it. And I don't have anything to resin. So I'm just going to do that. And then we'll put a little bit on top of our seed beads once we do that. All right. I'm going to take these off because I made a mess with my hands. I'm gonna take a peek and make sure everything's covered real quick. Covered, everything looks good. I'm gonna take these off very carefully. And throw them in my bin. And real quick, before we do the seed beads, I'm gonna use this heat gun. You could use a hairdryer. Whoops, too high. And I'm gonna run it over the top and pop bubbles, okay? Because anytime you mix resin or any two liquids together, you're incorporating air into that mixture and it does create tiny little minuscule bubbles. Now the bubbles don't bother me too terribly much, but I know they bug them poopy out of some of y'all. But we're gonna run it over the heat from this heat gun pops those bubbles really well. And then I'm gonna turn that off and I got a little drippage here. I'm gonna clean that up. And I got some here. Let me make sure this is where it needs to be. And next we're going get seed beads. I got resin in my hair on the tip of my ponytail. I've done that a million times. Yeah, I've had to cut mine off too. Done it so many times. Okay, had to have a sip. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some of these sparkly iridescent seed beads. These come from Hobby Lobby. They are, uh, Bead Treasures is the brand name and they are glass seed beads, and the color is called Crystal Luster, and they're the size 12 seed beads. So I'm gonna pop the top off this booger, and I'm gonna pour them in another little cup. I feel like I have more control. Mm, I feel like I have more control 
when I put them in a cup because it's not a whole tube of beads. And I'm always paranoid that if I like start using this, that the whole thing's gonna dump out into my art piece and then I'll cry. <laughs> mm, try ice in your Diet Coke. It's with water. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I've got a, little, a few of those little uh, crystal luster seed beads. And I am going to sprinkle those on top of my glass. I like to call this frost on the pumpkin, but I'm gonna just put a few at the top on all of my pumpkin. And I'll micromanage those in a minute. I'm gonna come down my glass and add a few on my glass bits. And then I might just take a few in my fingers no red coffee tonight. And just smatter them. I'm driving, so I can't. I can't. Now, what I can do is just take a toothpick or, um, where's my toothpick? Or my beading tool or whatever. Where is, oh, here are my toothpicks. My beading tool is in the other room. So I'm gonna use a toothpick. I got a little bag of toothpicks and any bead that I just put on that like went rogue and like flew all over the place, I can just scooch those around. Make sure they are where I want them and not somewhere I don't. Now this is a good time as well. Well, while you have your toothpick, Oh, I'll, I won't forget, Barbara, is to take a peek and make sure there's no debris in your art piece. Now, all of our houses have dust. I don't care who you are and how often you clean, everywhere has dust. So, occasionally, you're going to find a little bit of dust debris, and you can just pick that out and then move on and don't worry about it because you're going to get debris in your art sometimes because none of our houses are dust-free. The key is to just don't stress about it. All right, I'm looking. I don't see any debris. I don't see any issues. Everything looks good. All right, let me show you this close up. I love this. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad we did the green. Hang on, I wanna, there's a seed bead right here. I wanna move it. I just threw my toothpick away. Let me show you this close up. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm gonna go slow. So there is the top where you can see our stem and our leaf and our little curlies. And then we'll go down. I'm gonna turn it sideways so you can kind of see the whole thing. Look at that. I'm trying to get as close as I can. But look at that, that is so pretty and it's so elegant and simple and monochromatic. I love it. We do, Jan, don't tell anybody, but I definitely do. I have cats, so yeah, my house is a dust factory. <laughs> this is so pretty, y'all. So it was literally five paint colors, six if you count the pearl. Um, so we did uh, Snow White, or the white pumpkin with the gray and the uh, bleach sand on our pumpkin. We have two light and a dark green, pearl background, and then we use vitrograph, a little pumpkin stem, and we use clear glass, and I got a rogue bead. We use clear glass, or starfire, starfire glass, and crystal luster seed beads. Look at that.